Today we're back with another de-influencing video, if you will. I am going to go over a list of things that I was influenced to buy that I don't think are worth the hype or worth the money or that I regret buying, honestly. These are gonna range from like shoes to fashion to all sorts of different things under the sun. And you know, I am someone with ADHD. I am, you know, impulsive sometimes, I will say. I'm really trying to work on only buying things that I really need or that I have a gap for in my closet or that are on like a wish list or whatever instead of just scrolling through Instagram stories or TikTok and like buying every single thing that someone recommends, you know? You know? Some of these products, to me anyway, for my For You page were like super, super viral and everyone was talking about them or I just saw them and was like, I need that in my life. And I'm gonna give you my real raw, honest opinions about them. If you like any of this stuff, that's amazing. I am so happy for you, honestly. But this is stuff that just really did not work out for me. So I know you guys love a good de-influencing video. I love watching these videos as well. So we have a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and jump in. So starting off, I know in a past de-influencing video, I talked about my Ugg slippers. I think they were called the Ugg Taz slippers and I hated them. They're cute. They look like horse hooves, whatever. I really kind of hate these. I literally saw someone at the mall yesterday wearing them and they were all smushed in the back, but I digress. I'm correct about that hatred. But another thing that I didn't really expect to talk about in this video, but that has proven to be a purchase that I regret buying is my mini baby pink Uggs. I believe they're called the micro mini Uggs in the baby pink color and they're so cute, but they are not comfortable. I don't remember this at all. I used to have a pair of just like the classic Uggs in high school. I got so excited to see Uggs coming back around in recent years because they're so nostalgic. It's a part of my life and my childhood and my adolescence. If you know, you know. If you grew up and went to high school in the early 2000s, you remember the mini skirt. And so when I saw these like mini ones coming around, I was like, okay, cute. They're colorful, they're fun. I had a fake pair in like a brown color and I loved them, but I really wanted to have a colorful Pair. So I made the splurge, I purchased the baby pink pair, and let me tell you, they tore up the back of my foot. That could just be because I needed to break them in, but I don't remember having to do that, and I think it's just like the particular style that I went for, the micro mini, or maybe it's called the ultra mini, but I don't have them anymore. I did end up reselling them because I don't know if it was just that they weren't right for my foot exactly, and like the way I walk and stuff. I know that that can totally depend on like comfort level. I would wear them occasionally, but I just found myself like not getting much wear out of them, and for how expensive they are, you would think that those would be something that you wear almost every day, you know? So I was disappointed in those. Sometimes in the past, I have been guilty of like holding on to things and being like, I'll find a way to wear it. I'll find a way to make this work. I bought it, so I need to make sure that I wear it. And like, sometimes you can just accept defeat. You know what I mean? Maybe in the future, I'll find another pair of Uggs that I enjoy, but it's really not practical. And I didn't really like them. I feel like I always start off these videos with shoes because that is probably where I'm the most impulsive and I just see something and I'm like, oh, that looks cute. I'm gonna try it and it's gonna be perfect. And a lot of times I'm like kind of disappointed. And this is actually something that I bought and immediately returned, but I thought I would mention it anyways because I was influenced and it's the Birkenstock clogs. However, I didn't buy the Birkenstock Bostons. Those are kind of like the trendy popular clogs. I actually ended up buying the Birkenstock Londons, which are more of like a shoe instead of a clog. Like it goes over the back of your ankle. Cause I thought that's gonna be so much easier. The like knockoff Birkenstocks that I have are nice, but they just, I feel like they fly off my foot all the time. Again, I think it depends on like how you walk. I feel like I'm just gripping my toes the entire time trying to keep those things on, but they are so cute. So I was like, this would be the perfect solution because you have the cuteness of the clog, but then it goes over the back of your foot and like you wouldn't even be able to tell. And I've heard that because I saw it on TikTok, um, like in Germany, they're really popular. Like everyone wears the Londons in Germany. And I was like, okay, cool, trendy, chic, love that. So I bought myself a pair and then Drew actually bought a pair and and sadly, when I got them in, they were so large looking. I don't know how to describe it, but like the toe area was just huge. It made it look like I was wearing clown shoes and I don't know how else to describe it. They fit great and like the idea was nice. It was like almost giving me dysmorphia about my feet. I was like, do my, what is going on? Do my feet look like this? Let me know in the comments if you tried out the Londons as well and if you've had the same experience because I just want a Birkenstock clog with sport mode. That's all I want. I just want like the same as the Crocs with like a, just a little strap to go around the back of my ankle. I think that would be perfect. I get the Doc Martin mules or clogs recommended to me a lot and they're cute, but I want the Birkenstocks, you know what I mean? So yeah, sadly the Londons were a fail. At least I was able to get my money back. I didn't like wear them anywhere except in my house and I was able to return them, but that was a huge bummer for sure. 
Okay, the last pair of shoes, I promise. Um, I had to mention this pair of Pumas that I got, which I'm so sad about, I still have them, but number one, they were way too big. I think they just run large, but I saw a couple people showing these on like TikTok and Instagram and I was like, oh my God, those are so cute. They're like hot pink and hot green. These kind of like pastel neon -y colors and I was like, I love them. And I wore them for the first time and they gave me the worst blisters of my entire life on the back of my ankle. Like it's still showing to this day. That was like months ago and they're very much still there. It was so gnarly. I showed it to Drew and he was like, oh my God. He literally volunteered to like give me a piggyback home. We were out on a walk. Um, it was like that gnarly. I had to fold them down and wear them as slip-ons for the rest of my walk. And it's just like, why are we making shoes that are so uncomfortable? I don't get it. I feel like I have a pair of Sambas that does that to me, but then a pair that doesn't do that at all to me. I still get really bad blisters on the back of my ankles when I wear my low top Doc Martens, even with the heel protection even with everything else. So it's just very confusing to me why we are making shoes so uncomfortable still. But yeah, it's so sad because I love those. And honestly, I purchased large surface area band-aids to wear under my socks for the next time I wear them because I love them. They're so cute, but they're just so uncomfortable. So I kind of regret buying them. Let me know if you have any recommendations or if there's a sneaker that you can just wear that's like right away super comfortable, but that's also cute and like colorful and fun for summer. So yeah, I am still, I know I just said that there are things that I hold on to and I'm like, I'm gonna find a way to wear them, but I am. I'm not gonna be defeated by a pair of shoes, but I just thought I would mention it in case you've also been thinking about getting them that like, they're really uncomfortable, at least for me personally. Like they cause me physical pain, you know? So that's, that's a no from me. Okay, this next one I actually do have because I'm stuck with it, unfortunately. Um, and that's my bad, we'll get into it. But the next thing that I do regret buying that I was influenced to buy is this pair of Saunderhaus gingham pants. Now, hear me out. These are really cute. I actually first heard about these, I think on TikTok. And then when I was talking about gingham pants and just fun pants that I enjoy for summertime in a recent video, I got a few comments and DMs from people saying to try out these Saunderhaus pants and that they're like really long for tall girlies and that they're relatively size inclusive and that they're a small sustainable brand. And I was like, perfect, I love it. So I picked these up in a size extra large and like, they're very cute. They're exactly what I was looking for. But when I put them on, Oh my God. You may not see it as much as I do, but it's just a thing that really, really bothers me. And it's because of the way the pockets are sewn. They like stick out, they like pucker out on the sides and they completely change my silhouette. They do run a little bit big as well. So I probably could have sized down to a large, but I was sorely disappointed when I learned that there's no return policy um, because they are a small sustainable brand, which like I should have even looked before I considered buying them. Um, so I'm either gonna have to resell them or try to make them work in some way. I probably am gonna lean towards reselling them. So if you have any suggestions on what to do, I don't know if it's possible to like take them to a tailor and have the pockets sewn up so that it doesn't do that like weird sticking out thing on the side, but I'm just like so sad about these, especially cause so many of my comments and like lovely people that I trust told me to buy these. I think it's just a me thing. It's definitely not them, it's me. But like, you know, these weren't cheap. I think I even had to wait for a drop. Like I think I signed up for like the next drop or email notifications or something like that. And they just, they sadly didn't work out. So I do actually regret buying these cause they're like the perfect pant other than that. And so it's just, they just hate the way they look on me. That's really all I'm trying to say. Next is something that'll probably come as no surprise if you've been watching videos of mine, but I regret buying any bra ever in general. Like, I mean, mostly in my life, but particularly any bra that has underwire is no longer in my possession. I do not have time for that pain in my life. I have bought every single bra you could imagine. I've bought the bras that people say, oh, you don't feel it. It's the most comfortable bra I've ever worn. It's like you're wearing nothing. It's been, you know, from really expensive ones to very affordable ones to every style and design under the sun. I have tried and I simply cannot wear bras with underwire. That is something that I have learned in my ripe age of 36 in this particular year in my life. I'm just like, no, absolutely. Like, why? What? To me anyway, I think it's because of like my posture and the way I sit and whatever, but I find that anything with an underwire just digs into my bones. Like it digs into my ribs. It hurts so badly and I just can't do it. And I don't have time for it anymore. I've actually gotten a few comments recently being like, you need to wear this type of bra or you need to wear something that gives you a better shape. And to that I say, no. Grow up, I 
Grow up! I will not sacrifice my comfort for fashion any longer. I've pretty much just stopped wearing anything that isn't comfortable to me anymore. I'm just a sensitive girly, you know? And so these types of things really affect me. If something sensory is happening, like when it comes to my clothing, I simply cannot function. Like I will have a meltdown. If a tag is scratching at me or if a pair of jeans is cutting into my stomach or if I'm chafing between my legs or if my shoes are uncomfortable or whatever, I simply cannot go on. So <laughs> that's just what I've learned. It probably is a me thing as for a lot of these things. But if you've also been struggling with that, there are some really cute bras that don't have an underwire, so they're not like perfect, but that they're pretty great. I actually am wearing a Victoria's Secret bra at the moment that doesn't have any underwire and I'm still kind of working on the strapless one, but it works great for what I need it for. It's very comfy. I'm gonna link it down below. I know this is a de-influencing video, but in case you've been been, you know, kind of considering buying this like very expensive underwire bra and you found that every single one you've tried hasn't worked for you, just don't. Just take it from me. Just don't. Okay, I'm just gonna come right out with this. I think that expensive skincare for me is a scam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? There are so many skincare people that are really, really die hard about their like 12 step skincare routine. And I will say that I was influenced, especially by the facialists that I used to go see and by social media in general to purchase like all of this very expensive skincare, vitamin C serums, hyaluronic acids, AHA, BHA creams, expensive cleansers, moisturizers, all of everything. And I spent, I mean, quite literally hundreds of dollars on different things over the last, like I would say probably year, two years to try and hopefully help like heal my skin, even my skin tone, help with my texture, help with rosacea. I was getting facials at the same time. So I was taking the recommendations of all of their products that they suggested for me. And honestly, it made zero difference in my skin whatsoever. And it actually made my rosacea so much worse because of all of the irritants and stuff in the products that I was using. So obviously this is like only me speaking from my personal experience as someone with like bad skin, rosacea, hyperpigmentation. But um, yeah, I literally just use Vanna Cream now, which is like the plainest, it's like a Cetaphil or a CeraVe. It's just the plainest, most simple, gentle ingredients. I use the cleanser and I use the moisturizer and that's it. I did recently get prescribed a topical cream for my rosacea and I'm waiting on that to come in the mail. So hopefully that will make a difference. That's like a complete separate issue, but I've heard so many people say that their skin has been transformed using different skincare products. I wish I was you, honestly. I wish I could relate. Unfortunately, I cannot. I felt like I was just adding more and more and more and more and more steps into my skincare routine. And the facialist was literally writing me like a list. It was like, do this first, then do this, then do this, then do this, then once a week do this, then do, and it was just like, it was, it was insane. <laughs> There's not much I can do with these half used, you know, skincare products that I have, but but you live, you learn, you know what I mean? Um, and we're gonna like maybe save my opinions on facials for another video. Cause like, that's a whole other, that's a whole other opinion of mine. Maybe we'll do an unpopular opinions video, but uh, I'll just say that I have learned to just really, really scale it back. And my skin has been a lot happier for it. Next for a hair care product, this one really threw me for a loop because I've seen everyone like still actually to this day talking about this product. And this is like the shiny wow hair product, I believe it's called. It's like a thermal mist. You spray it on your hair after you get out of the shower and then you blow dry it immediately. And I think you do it like section by section. And I think I bought this probably back in like 2020, honestly. And I've heard so many people say that it's almost like a keratin treatment for your hair. It like smooths it out. It gets rid of all your frizz. It makes it super shiny and healthy looking. And I used this stuff and like I saw no difference in my hair, which is so crazy. Like, I don't know if I just have weird skin and hair. That's very possible. But I was so disappointed by this stuff. I think I still probably have like a quarter to a third of the bottle left, but I still try to use it like frequently. And I just haven't noticed any change. In fact, sometimes when I would blow dry my hair, I felt like my hair was frizzier. And I feel like my hair texture has completely changed over the last like five years. That's a whole other topic for another video someday. But my hair has gotten much more like wavy and frizzy and it's just like not 
behaving the same way it always has throughout my life. So I don't know if that's like a hormonal thing or what, but I was so disappointed by this product. I genuinely like am so happy for everyone who seems to love it. I see people get like the really big sizes of it and even people with like naturally curly hair swear by it. They say that it really helps when they're like straightening their hair or doing a blowout or whatever. And for me, it just like doesn't work. I'm so confused. If you have any tips or if that's also happened to you, please let me know in the comments below because I feel insane. I feel a little bit insane. Like sometimes there's stuff that works so well for people and I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Because it doesn't work. You know, keep that in mind if you have similar hair to me, but um, yeah, please let me know your experience with it down in the comments because I need to know if it's just me. It probably is. But anyways, moving on. If you are a hairstylist, please click out of this video. I am so sorry. <laughs> I do feel like most really expensive high-end hair care products and makeup products like don't work any better for me than drugstore stuff. I don't know if I've talked about this on my main channel, but I know for sure I've talked about it on my vlog channel where I um, have completely switched back pretty much to all drugstore hair care products because I have been spending so much money over the last several years buying the most expensive heat protectants, shampoos, conditioners, deep conditioners, clarifying shampoos, like, you know, all these different styling products, etc. And they just kept getting more and more and more and more and more expensive. And I wasn't seeing any improvement in my hair at all. In fact, I kind of felt like it was making my hair worse. And I know there's like a whole topic uh, about that on TikTok. I've seen it where people are like, actually the other products have like silicones. And so it actually makes your hair look like it's better, even though it's not. But for me, like, like the happiest that my hair is, is just using like drugstore shampoo and conditioner. I'm sorry. I was buying like $35 shampoo and $35 conditioner and like it wasn't doing anything for me. I don't feel like it was making my hair look any better if I felt personally, I mean, like it was kind of making my hair more broken and like worse. I don't know. Spending so much less money on my hair care products and having my hair look exactly the same is a true testament to what works best for me. And yeah, same with makeup. Like I said, I'm using a Maybelline foundation right now. I think it works just as well as like my Fenty foundation that I used or my Too Faced Born This Way foundation. It's kind of what works the best for me right now. And I've kind of switched, besides like eyeliner and things like that, I've kind of switched everything back over to drugstore. So maybe in the future, I'll do like some kind of beauty video where we talk about that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm just like really big on saving money on those drugstore products, even though drugstore has gotten a little bit more expensive. Um, I mean, it's nothing compared to what I was spending at Sephora on hair and makeup products, like crazy. Okay, and last but not least for like a kind of home slash lifestyle product, I am sad to say that the Vitamix blender is kind of a disappointment. I bought this Vitamix blender actually on like one of the Amazon Prime days or Black Friday or something like that. And so I got like a pretty severe discount, which is great. Cause usually, I mean, they're like $500 or something like that, maybe more. And I'm simply not gonna pay that, but our blender that we previously had, which I think was like a Ninja, it was smoking. Like there was smoke coming out of it. So it was time, it was definitely time to move on. And so I was like, well, this is a blender that I've always wanted. It gets every little nook and cranny and blends it right up. I've seen people make nut butters in these things and salad dressings and sauces. And it has the little like dial where you can control the speed and just how fast you want the blades to go. And because I primarily use this for smoothies, like I make a smoothie every time after a workout, I was really disappointed. And I feel like it takes like twice as long to blend because you do have to use the little like, I don't know what it is the little handheld like stick thingy and you kind of dig it around in there and have to move everything around. Whereas like when I was using my Ninja, you just like blend it and it's good. It blends everything up. So I feel like for the money, I would have rather just spent it on like another Ninja or something comparable because I don't really use a blender that much for cooking. I don't make a ton of sauces or fancy nut butters or whatever it may be that like probably would be great for some people. Like people who make cashew sauces, like vegans and stuff like that, I remember, or like smoothie bowls, things like that. I think it would be perfect, but I just like don't use it for that type of stuff. So for me personally, I do kind of regret buying it and wish that I had just gone for something a little less expensive and something that works better for what I need. But please let me know if you've also had issues with the Vitamix. I did get like the smaller one, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it's just like, it was kind of like meh for me. I thought it was gonna be this like all powerful life-changing blender because I saw everybody talking about it, but it turns out it was just kind of mid. 
So I'm gonna stand 10 toes down on that one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We're gonna end it with a spicy one, but yeah, I do not think it's worth the money at all. So I think that's enough chit chatting for me today. I think I've stuck my neck out enough times and um, please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also turn on my post notifications if you wanna be notified every time I post a new video. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more de-influencing videos or if you wanna see me make a video on like my unpopular opinions or maybe more trends that I won't be buying, kind of like anti-haul type of stuff. Cause I really love making videos like this and I want to continue showing obviously things that I love and recommend, but also things that like did not work out. I will be filming a video pretty soon where I follow up on a lot of like the viral TikTok products and stuff that I have bought recently for videos. Um, Cause that's gonna be like a whole separate video. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sending you all of my love and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.